Yeah. Hey everyone, how's it going? Finally, got myself another graphics card from Newegg. And this one, thankfully, because I still have yet to win a Newegg Shuffle, this one was just one of their combos that was available online. So, let's go ahead and open it. Attack of the bubble. More bubble. More bubble. Guess what? More bubble. Okay. So we got this. And I'm hiding the other one. Now, this came with the bundle. I will use this in the future. But just not today. This is not uh, what the whole video is about. It's about that. Finally, I got myself a 6600 XT. Granted, it's an ASRock probably nothing special we'll open it up and take a look at it but it doesn't really matter we're going to be mining on it as long as it stays cool it's all that matters okay for the asrock unboxing let's uh take a look at it not even sealed from the factory or anything fold got a card and a little pamphlet down the bottom, and that is it. Nothing special. But then again, what do you expect for $379? I don't care. So, it is sealed. Sealed better. rid of the crinkle okay so at least asrock uses the pcie 16 x uh protector on it so that's great does have all the crinkle plastic on it so let's get that off of there if i can get a hold of it oh this one goes el elsewhere come on I do have to say, for a dual side card, or a dual fan card, it is pretty freaking light. But it does have uh, three DP ports and one HDMI. Not that that really matters in our instance of what we're doing. Two clear fans. This is the Challenger series. Oh, we got more plastic to peel. I like peeling this stuff off. I hate leaving it on. Oh, what, there's, oh there's a little tab here. And I can't get it because my fingers are too big. There we go. Where'd it go? It just disappeared. Oh my god, I lost it. Where did it go? Oh, there it is. Oh my god. I actually could not see it. <laughs> okay, so... Yes, this actually is a metal backplate. It is very thin. And looking through it... Let me get a light. It... Mm, okay, there is one little spot right about here, right in the center, with a um, thermal pad. Nice blue, I would guess probably a three millimeter pad. That's what it looks like in the center here. Uh, come on, turn off. So this is passive, but a little bit active. It does help suck out a little bit of heat, which is cool. I've seen other cars that doesn't have that. One single eight pin, and right inside here, they do actually have, let's see if I get the right angle there, they do seem to be having active cooling for the MOSFETs on the VRM. Uh, it looks like there's like this little bridge on the f uh, heat sink fins coming on down and going across, so that's not bad at all either. I guess one of the things that I completely forgot to mention was, yeah, the card actually ends here, and they actually did add a little bit of extra heatsink space so you do have a pass through on this considering it's only a dual fan setup it's not a triple fan setup so not bad for a budget $379 card at least on paper or design let's go ahead and just plug it into the test rig and get on with it get it into hive os and see what we can do with it put it through its paces 
And on low power cards like this, you can actually get away with doing this. I got a single A pin coming directly from the power supply. So we have more than enough wattage. A pin up top and then the six pin that runs off of it directly down to the side of the GPURisers.com riser because they have the side six pin connector PCIe sitting right there and it's all one unit. So let's go ahead and turn this on and get back to the computer. Lights and spinning fans. Okay, so yeah, this is on the Nick Fury uh, rig that I actually brought back from the crypto closet just for the testing of this card. So I threw it in my old metal rig just so it's safe. Uh, we can see it's loaded up here. You do need to be running the either the newest version of Hive OS as of September 1st. 2021 or maybe even the beta to make sure you have the correct drivers and everything installed so you can correctly see the 6600 XT. Now right now it's CPU mining, it's not doing anything with the GPU, but we can see CPU and GPU, or we can see the core and the RAM temperatures on this card. Gotta love that fact that you can do that easily with AMD, but you can't do that with Nvidia. Um, 19 watts idle, nothing on there. First, we're going to test Ethereum, Ergo, and Raven with no overclocks whatsoever, just so we can see what it does. So let's go to our flight sheets, and we have test, test, test. Let's try ETH first. I also just turned off the uh, hash rate watchdog, which had to do something with the CPU mining. Nothing to do with what we had now. And I also turned off the auto fan and set a static fan of 60%, just so we can see what's going on here. And the room we're currently in is about 75 degrees Fahrenheit. So take it and convert it on over to Celsius. But right now, let's give it a few minutes to run. It's only been running for a little less than two minutes. Let's let it hit saturation temperature in about five minutes and see where it sits. Okay, so three and a half minutes. The temperature really isn't going up at all anymore. It says 54 watt software and 28.45 mega hash. That's not bad at all. And to boot, it's a quiet card. It's only sitting about eight feet over there and I can barely hear it at 60% fan speed. So that gives us a good baseline for Ethereum. Let's switch over to Ergo now and see what it does. Okay, so the temperature did come down a little bit. So did the wattage, a uh, few watts, but uh, 55.84 mega hash stock on Ergo. So yeah, it's meant to run a little bit cooler and that's a respectable number for running completely stock. So let's uh, get to the little heater here and try Raven. Okay, 15.25, let me write that down, 15.25 mega hash stock on Raven. Now, of course, we can see the temperatures have come up a little bit, but we're only seeing a 10 to 11 degree C spread. That's it. And the temperatures are still really acceptable, if not extraordinary. I mean, 50 degree C on the GDDR6 RAM, you can't beat that. Of course, yes, the wattage is up, so that's why we're getting more heat. It's doing more work, and the fan is still at 60%. Let's refresh one more time here. Yeah, that's what we're getting on stock. So that's pretty impressive. Let's switch back over to Ethereum and apply some overclocks and see what we get. So you can see on the screen now, it's been running for over an hour, and it took me another hour before that just to really fine tune the overclocks for the 6600 XT under Ethereum. And we are getting 32.59 mega hash. Look at those temperatures, perfect. 60% fan, 53 watts software. Uh, core 905. VDD or the core voltage 635 millivolts and the memory at 1150. Now I did learn a few things for that hour of tweaking I did on this. Uh, I've had the core all the way up to 965 and the mega hash was the same. So we are not core limited at all. Conversely, you cannot take the core down to 900. 
hundred. It's the bottom floor of what the BIOS on the GPU will allow you to go to. Uh, if you go to 900, it kind of messes with the voltages and it doesn't work right. So 905 is the lowest you can go. Going any higher doesn't really give you any more mega hash. So keep it nice and low and keep your voltage on the core nice and low. Make it efficient. Also with the RAM, if you go down to like 1050, of course it's gonna drop off a cliff. And if you go much higher than like 1155 or 1160, then it starts dropping again. There's a happy sweet spot, and I found mine right at 1150. You're gonna to have to tune your card because Silicon Lottery, oh God, yes. And going between manufacturers, there will be variant systems. Find what basically works and then just keep moving the memory clock. 5 megahertz, like I tried 1145, 1150, 1155, 1160, and figure out where the sweet spot is on your card. Every card will be different. You can try my overclocks, but I'm not guaranteeing anything. So with that said, let me reset up here and we're going to see the best we can get out of Ergo next. Okay, so there actually wasn't that much tuning involved with Ergo. I was able to use the same core clock of 905, same memory of 1150. Uh, changing either of them did not produce any better results with Ergo. The one thing I did have to do though, I could not run the core voltage at 635. I had to bump it up to 650 because I was actually getting hardware errors on the card. So it needed a little bit more voltage, but otherwise it's still running a few watts less than Ethereum and we're getting just shy of 64 mega hash. There have been a few people online that have said they've gotten 65 mega hash, but that's with a Sapphire card, and we're literally talking one mega hash here. Um, I could boil that down to Silicon Lottery, as I've already said before. So let's move on to the last one and play with Raven and see how good we can get with that. Okay, so here's Raven coin for you. 17.42 mega hash at 70 watts software. Uh, that's pretty impressive. I had it up to 17.6 mega hash, but at the same time, I had to kick the core all the way up to 1700. The uh, core voltage up to like 850. It was pulling over 100 watts at that point. It definitely crossed into the realm of diminishing returns. I could possibly get it really close to 18 mega hash, but it's not worth it. This is probably your best settings right here on average you have to tweak it for your card but this seems to be a nice happy medium between efficiency and beating the ever-loving heck out of your card so what we're going to do now we're going to backtrack one more time the rig right now is running off of 240 volts i'm going to turn it off unplug the gpu and plug it back into 120 volts through a kilowatt and we're going to get a baseline for how much power the rig pulls just sitting at idle with no GPUs and then we're going to see how much uh, wattage the GPU is actually using not from software from at the wall with each algorithm and the overclocks that we have found so give me one second to get that set up okay so I got the GPU disconnected we're back on 120 volts and you can see it bouncing around basically between like 25 and 27 so we're gonna go with 26 watts is our baseline with it not doing anything it's just sitting idle as you can see on the screen right now so let me plug the gpu back in and we'll try ethereum first with our overclocks and see what it goes to okay so we have 32.59 mega hash on our ethereum again our ethereum overclocks and it says we're pulling 53 watts from the software well we're actually pulling 122 can we get this to the point where you see it? there you go 122 watts from the wall so 122 minus 26 96 watts for the gpu doing ethereum let's try ergo okay ergo 64 mega hash at 52 watt software at the wall it's actually about 102 come on there we go 102 watts at the wall so Clear 102 minus 26, 76 watts. 
definitely a much more efficient algorithm and we already knew that but it's nice to actually see it so 76 watts not bad let's go to ravencoin and see how much it cooks the card okay we got ravencoin running again we're at 17.44 mega hash at 72 watts at the wall we're actually getting about 137 to 139 there we go it's weird doing this in the camera um Let's take 139 since we did see a peak out to that. So 139 minus 26 gives us 113 watts. Definitely the most power hungry algorithm. And again, we knew this, but at least this also shows as long as you don't lose your overclock settings or run its stock, you could get away with running a single six pin with a splitter to the eight pin on top of the card and also a six pin on the riser. It is safe with this card. Don't do it to every card. I must put that in there because someone's going to take this the wrong way and run double splitters on a 3090. No, don't do that. So that pretty much wraps up my review for the 6700 XT. It's definitely in the ballpark for the 1660 Super. Not quite as efficient, because remember, on Ethereum, we got the same hash rate, basically. 32, maybe 33, if you really push it, mega hash on Ethereum. But I think the 1660 Super does it around 75 watts. We were doing it at 96. Still respectable, though. Definitely a lot better than the older Polaris cards. Oh, by far. So if you made it all the way to the end of the video, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Thumbs up, please. Share this video around the mining community. Uh, come and stop by the Mining Misfit Discord. Come say hi to myself and everyone else there. And I will see you on the next video.